right. So you know that given that we didn't have a hiatus between season six and seven, and not to mention it was the holidays and there were other videos for me to do. I didn't do my typical like season six overview video or anything like that. I think at most I did the new season ranking where I think season six is now my number three favorite season. What is it like? One, two, six, um, four, three, five. I think that's my new ranking from best to worst. But this video, I wanted to do it last week, but I said maybe I should wait until season seven started so I can actually know whether or not season six. Did season six even matter? What I mean by that is given that we have the new writers, we have some new uh, changes and um, I felt like I needed to see how it would play out, how the season opener would play out to determine what elements of season six would even make it to season seven. And man, oh man, um, there were a number of things that were written out of continuity, um, glossed over or just completely changed. Now, some of the things I already predicted, such as certain characters who would no longer be in the show for whatever reason, and um, new plot points that will be introduced. But I think that for, it seems, okay, the Zack and Fatima stuff, go back to season six, I'd say about dang near 95 or more percent of their storyline revolved around Michael. And Michael isn't gone from the show. He's just currently in foster care, but he will be in the season because they're going to be hiring a nanny, meaning that they will get custody. From, um, you know, Heather via, you know, taking Michael out of foster care. So that storyline stuff actually was relevant. It's more so certain plot points with the other main characters that didn't quite translate over into what we were doing in season seven. For example, I've said this a number of times today in other videos. If Tyler Perry were still writing season seven, I have no doubt there wouldn't have been a time skip. He would have continued with the Brian stuff with Karen, the Danny abduction. Um, maybe even kept Calvin aboard and some other char characters. But I think that uh, the three month time skip... <laughs> <clears throat> I know people hate it when I make these comparisons, but to like the Marvel films in Avengers Endgame where they skip ahead five years and it's like, there's a lot of stuff that happened that, you know, over the course of the Disney Plus shows and all the Marvel movies, Endgame came out in what, like 2019 or 2019, I think. So basically almost five years and they're still trying to piece together the things that happened over the course of those five years within the different characters in the Marvel Universe. So in three months, a lot of things shifted. Calvin is gone. He wasn't even given like a final scene. His last scene was telling Maurice he would find a good person or a good guy for him to go out with. And then he just disappeared. You know, uh, Preston, at least him and Aaron got final farewells. Now, I've been hearing rumors that... Um, the writers of season seven hinted at um, Aaron coming back. There is a Twitter spaces that people have sent me. I haven't listened to it yet. I think I mentioned this in my episode review. I've been preoccupied with the Cat Williams thing. So when I get time, either tomorrow or over the weekend, I want to sit back, listen to the Twitter spaces, probably when I'm editing other videos and then do a video on that Twitter spaces to give my thoughts. So um, Aaron might be coming back, but even if he doesn't, at least he got a farewell scene in um in um season six. Now the Brian stuff, I said this leading into this episode. I said, I don't know if he's going to be in the next season because I see what they're planning, but given the fact we're gonna have a time skip and the salon's gonna open, we're gonna skip over some vital stuff. And guess what? It turns out he left Karen high and dry at some point during construction. I would want to say maybe within a month and a half or so. I'm just speculating. I don't know the time frame of when exactly he decided to step away from the project and another contractor came in. And according to Karen, the new contractor stated, Brian took a leave of absence for marital, marital issues. Basically, he needed time to be with his family. And Pam speculates his wife kind of sniffed out that, you know, her man was interested in another woman. 
And as a result, you know, she probably made him stop helping Karen because keep in mind, up until the point of him working with Karen, he was pretty much stated to be extremely loyal to his wife. No other reports of him walking away from projects or whatever. So it seems like his wife felt like, you know what, I think you're getting a little bit too involved with your new client, so you need to step away. In another video, I speculated that maybe there was a little something, something going on because Karen and Andy have been known to mess around with married men. So uh, the whole Brian thing, I feel like Tyler was definitely building up something with that, especially with the Chelsea character in the last episode detailing how I don't know. I mean, he's never really interacted with a woman the way he's been interested in you, like letting another woman ride in this vehicle, giving, you know, low ball prices for things. It's like he must really be into you. And given the fact that she kicked Aaron to the curb and was understanding about Zach being with Fatima and wanting to be single and whatnot, getting all this extra attention from a man, I think Karen may have indulged in the chocolate. That's all I'm saying. Um, When it comes to Jordan, cast change simple and plain i'm not going to talk about it that much it's a new actor because the old one was working on another project simple as that simple as that but then a lot of people are asking the same question like why in the world is penelope still with gary well for one gary said he would try to get her back number two he said she was weak and number three remember what i said andy and fatima are trash for not telling penelope what gary's plans were it was pretty much a Girl, you don't need him, but it's like you didn't tell her that he plans on trying to get her back because he thinks she's weak. Really? You're not going to do that? Um, then, of course, Penelope still being pregnant. I mean, that's not a thrown away plot point, but she should have had her kid by now. And um, when we go over to Danny, you know, yeah, we just jumped ahead. She's with Tony and the nightmare stuff. Like I said, I didn't think the abduction would be relevant. They would probably just write it out somehow. And it was via a nightmare, but she's been having these reoccurring nightmares for months. And yeah, kind of circling back to the whole Calvin thing, um, being written off with one line that he had ran off with some white girl out of town. Yeah. I mean, if I were to make an assumption just based on like how Maurice was speaking to Sabrina over the phone, I'm willing to bet that they haven't really hung out that much. You know, I'm not saying like she doesn't see him, but keep in mind over the course of these three months, Sabrina has been interacting with um Rich, you know, in that, you know, dating relationship they have. So it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, more recent Sabrina didn't frequently communicate the same way they used to, because, you know, it's kind of like how typically your work friends, you're used to seeing them more than your own family, like five days a week, you're talking with each other. And if you're really cool, you're hanging out outside of work. But since these two aren't working together anymore, um, it's a matter of, uh, these two communicating when they can because again sabrina she's hanging out with rich and then when it isn't rich she's probably hanging out for girls so i really do think that the calvin thing really did fly under her radar because she wasn't really checking for him so for her to be surprised when he splits town and then she acts hurt like you know the least he could have done is say goodbye he doesn't owe you anything because you were hanging out with another dude for months and you made it clear a couple of times that you weren't interested in him romantically so it's just one of those things that uh it's just one of those things where three months is a long time <laughs> sabrina so i can imagine if, let's say um if tyler was still writing the show and at some point rich brings up he isn't interested in having kids and sabrina is and then they decide to break up. Then all of a sudden she'll be looking for Calvin. That just goes to show yet again, these women expect the men that they put on the bench to stay on the bench. And if they run off of another woman, then they're mad despite the fact that they're either sleeping around or they're dating another man. It's just ridiculous. But um, I, I do feel like um, season six, in the grand scheme of things, you could argue it didn't matter. But my thing is before even going into the season, I'm like, fans we just need to make it to see through season six to get to the promised land which is um season seven with the new writer so season six is going to be more of the same even though it was better than season five but some of the elements that mattered finally get addressed in the recap honestly you know what if you decided to sit out on season six and only watch season seven because of new writers the recap they gave at the beginning of the episode actually did a pretty solid job addressing all of the relevant plot points that would be brought over into season seven. 
So in a way, did it matter? Meh. Kind of not really. I mean, you can count on one hand that's been through a wood chipper the number of things from season six that were relevant in season seven. I mean, more specifically, season six B was more of a relevant list of plot points that season seven addresses than the first half of the season. So yeah, take that at face value. But regardless, um, season six, I think was pretty solid for the most part, but it kind of doesn't matter in terms of things that were being built up just seem to be written out with one line of dialogue. Brian's gone. Calvin's gone. Enough Michael's in foster care for now. And that's about it. So with that being said, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, like, and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.